No matter what type of flooring you're going to be installing, if you prep the floor properly and start with a nice level surface, the job is gonna be significantly easier. A lot of people are nervous to use self-levelers because they've had a bad experience and I have lots of friends that have horror stories, but I'm gonna show you how to do this job. It's not that hard if you prep and set up everything before you start mixing. So come with me and I'm gonna show you how to smooth a floor like this before you lay your tile, LVP, whatever you're gonna put on top of it. I had a pretty big dip towards this side of the room. Because self-leveler is pretty expensive, I tried to make up the height that I could with a piece of OSB before I started the self-leveling process. You wanna make sure you're working with a really clean surface, so take a moment to vacuum everything down and make sure you don't have a lot of dust or debris on the floor. Then probably the most important thing in the prep process is making sure that all the voids and cracks are filled because this stuff is super fluid and it's meant to flow anywhere that you'll allow it to flow. So all the cracks in the floor, you have a couple of options for filling those. Really, we just wanna make sure that water could not get through them. That's the way we have to look at it. You could take caulk and fill cracks in the floor. I used mesh tape and thin set. You also have to consider anywhere up to underneath your wall. So what I used was spray foam to fill fill that gap underneath of the wall going into the surrounding rooms. Then you also have to consider things like your bathtub and your toilet, and you have to make dams that will block the material from going underneath those dams and into those areas. So I put this wrap around the toilet, and then I caulk the base of everything that I think is a dam so that that fluid product cannot flow underneath of the dam that I have created. Now you're gonna roll on your primer. Another thing you may wanna consider is putting painter's tape on the base of your tub or around any surrounding surfaces that you need to protect. My tub came with a film on it, so I have something that once I'm done, I can just peel it back. In this case, I'm using Level Quick RS. Since I'm pouring over OSB, I am required to put a mesh for reinforcement in between my pour. You wanna be careful that the mesh doesn't stick up higher than where you're gonna pour, and in my case, I was going to a feather edge, and so I only extended the mesh as far as my pour could accommodate that for the depth. If you're tackling this project by yourself, I highly recommend recommend that you have all of your water pre-measured in its own buckets and that you have all of your leveling bags cut open and ready to go. Now you want to have extra because if you do not have enough when you start this project, you don't have time to go to the store and buy more. So always have more on site than you think that you're going to need. I really want to take a moment to focus on the mixing process because as you mix this, you are going to start to panic if you've never worked with this before because it looks like it's not doing anything. We're going to put this on a time lapse and show you at the end the minute where this starts to transition, but you're gonna spend a good two minutes or more where it looks like nothing's happening and this isn't starting to set up right. And then you're gonna start to worry that maybe you're letting it go too long and it's gonna start to set in your bucket. This specific time lapse here took a full two minutes and 37 seconds, but sometimes when I mix, it takes as much as three minutes or a little bit over. So it's important to get a good mixture because you don't want clumps in your mix. Don't panic. This is what it looks like when the mix starts to transform. Once I see this visible, change I like to mix a little bit longer and turn off my mixer and look at my mixture and then turn it back on and just double check that I don't see any clumps in there that need to be blended in start your pour at the wall furthest away from the exit as you pour you always want to keep a wet edge meaning when you do your next pour you want to pour on the edge of the previous pour and then they'll help blend and flow into one another don't just pour in a bunch of random spots even though this is called self leveler sometimes it needs a little bit of extra help to be moved around so some people use a trowel or a squeegee and some people even use a spiked roller to get bubbles out. I've never needed the spiked roller, but sometimes I have had to help it along in spots that I want to make sure that it reaches well. Even if your product looks dry, it might not be ready to bear weight. So make sure you read the specific instructions for your product on how long you need to wait before you can walk on top of the product. Once you know it's safe to walk on it, you can remove any of the dams that you created, cut away any caulk, cut away any spray foam. Make sure you cut this all nice and flush and level so you don't have bump outs when you go to install whatever you're gonna be installing on top of it. Once I cut everything away, I like to sweep and get a vacuum and just get the surface nice and clean so I'm ready to go on to my next steps in the process. Now that I've eliminated the huge drop in the floor from this side of the bathroom to this side of the bathroom, installing tile is gonna be considerably easier, especially since I'm gonna be installing a large format tile. We wanna get everything as perfect as possible before we start that install. So if you wanna follow along and learn how to tile a bathroom floor and especially a large format tile, click on this video right here and I'll show you how.